Hey everyone, it's Cam here once again welcoming you to the build room. In this week's episode, we're going to be doing a bit of mechanical work on Violet Crumbles, looking at a bodgy brake master cylinder. Uh, and then, as I promised last week, we're going to have a look at some of the action from Turtles in the Park. So stick around and see how we go. Okay, before we get too far into it, yes, I am sunburnt. My forehead and my nose are peeling because I got overstimulated at uh, Turtles in the Park and forgot to slip, slop, slap. Uh, let that be a lesson to everyone. In the meantime, you'll have to deal with someone looking like an extra from that uh, Nicolas Cage movie Face Off uh, for the duration of this episode. And hopefully I heal up before the next one. But in the meantime, let's check out this master cylinder. So when I actually got Violet Crumbles, the brakes were a little bit spongy and I couldn't quite figure out why. And then uh, I topped up the fluid at some point and noticed when I moved it up and down the driveway a few times, what was happening was instead of brake fluid being pushed through the rear lines towards the uh, drum cylinders, it was actually being pushed back into the reservoir and filling up and overflowing and spilling down. It's eaten the paint off some of the engine bay, which has then caused some surface rust, which I'm going to have to address and, and rust it out a little bit in the uh, strut tower as well, which again, going to need to fix that. So obviously before we're going to get good braking performance, that needs to be fixed. Now, I couldn't get a new brake master cylinder. Actually, I think there were ones floating around for about 400 bucks, but I wasn't going to spend that uh, if I can save this one with a rebuild kit. So... What I'm going to do today is basically disconnect the lines, pull the brake master off the booster, uh, and then pull it apart, see whether it's salvageable, and if it is, I'm going to throw a rebuild kit through it. Uh, and then, rather than $400 for a new brake master, we'll be looking at about $35 for the seal kit. Uh, the seal kits are really simple. They're just about, they're sort of four or five rubber seals that go around the pistons. Uh, you pull it apart and if it's in good condition, you can put new seals in it and if not, you're shit out of luck. So first things I guess, we'll just pull this off and have a look where we're at. Okay, so this one's pretty easy to get out. There's just the two electrical lines on the bottom which control that brake warning light on the dashboard. Uh, we have two fixed lines, one at the front and one at the back here on the side. And then four, looks like 10 or 12 mil bolts around the master and then it should lift off the vacuum booster. We don't need to touch the vacuum booster at this stage. That was working pretty well. Um, so yeah, just getting this piece off here and then we'll get it onto the bench and we'll look at the internals. All right, so the uh, flare nut removal tool uh, of choice is the six-sided ring spanner that I have here that has a slot cut in the end. This is not something I've cut up. You buy them like this. Uh, but basically it gives you more points of contact so that when you put you slide over the line and down across the nut, you don't run the risk of rounding out these, which is fairly common. Um, I don't know why, just because they get so tight, but ugh, that is fairly tight, but having that thing ensures I don't round that. You'll see a lot of people end up having to use vice grips and things like this and this because they've destroyed them permanently. Um, that's not a good spot to be in. So for the small outlay for these, they're pretty much worth it. Uh, so yeah, one off. Two off, or cracked at least. And once they're cracked and loose, then you can just use your hand, or if they're a little bit tight, use a normal open-ended spanner. Um, but that shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, so we've got our brake master here ready to roll. Uh, as you can see from the back, there is basically, this is where it mounts to the vacuum booster. And there is a circlip in there that we're gonna have to remove. And then we'll be able to pull out the pistons. Uh, we'll be able to check the condition of the bore. And we'll also be able to check the condition of the seals on the pistons. And hopefully everything's good. And then we just literally pop on a new set of uh, Protec seals. Uh, and we should be good to go. Uh, I am going to probably either paint or powder coat this while it's apart. I just think it's a good opportunity. So I'm gonna remove both of the reservoirs and the fluid sensors to start, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, 27 mil socket should get these base ones off. I 
believe they're the same sensor, so you don't have to really worry about front to rear. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that one. Oh, that is tight. Okay. It's leaking a fair amount of fluid out of that, but that's to be expected. Um, hashtag going through microfibers. Then in each side of the uh, reservoirs, you have a cap that holds the stopper and float, whatever it is. Uh, and then there's just a nut at the bottom of each. So just tip that out. Even more junk. It looks like a 17 or a 19. That looks good. All right, I'm just gonna have to put these in the vise. All right, they are pretty manky, but it is what it is. These are not the easiest things to get out. Especially when the uh, piston wants to apply pressure as well. All right, so that's nearly there. All right, circlip is off. And this is the piston, or at least the one of two. So this is gonna, gonna quit wasting microfibers. First one. Then there's a spring to pull out. rusty which is never a good sign so brake fluid has a amazing a capability to absorb water uh, which is why you change your brake fluid um, especially when the car's been sitting for a long time so I mean hopefully these parts are still salvageable but um, yeah we're about to find out okay guys so my apologies um, the battery ran out on the camera and I didn't realize so I've got the master cylinder all apart, and then to show you guys how to do it, I'm gonna to have to just sort of tell you what I did. So the master cylinder is arranged like this. There's another spring, like that. So you've got these two aluminum pistons. There's a total of five seals across it. Um, in order to get them out, you saw me take out these two. Uh, and then for this back one, what I had to do was remove this nut, which was in here, which holds that piston back in the back half. Uh, and then it wouldn't come out. It was, you know, there's a bit of corrosion and stuff in there. So what I did was actually just got my air duster like this and uh, put some air in the top. Now, obviously this thing's a little bit like a recorder at the moment. You have to play the little Dutch boy and try and plug up all the holes. Uh, so what I actually did was I got a couple of bolts that would just easily fit into certain ones like into the brake line and I was able to block that one up uh, and then on this one here because it's so large what I actually did was got a small nut and put it in backwards and then pop this one over the top so that when air ran through it it would push the two together and they would seal so I had all of those blocked up. Then I popped the air duster in the end here, 
uh, and uh, just held my fingers over that. Um, and then basically it pushed, the air pushed the uh, back piston all the way out. And then I had to get a pick like this in to drag out the spring. The one thing you want to be careful of, this is a nice, or should be, quite a nice smooth cylinder all the way along. So you don't want to get something that is sharp and start stabbing it in there blindly and scratching up all the bore. Uh, so I was really, really careful just to sort of slip this around the edge of the spring and then pull it down the end. So now we have a master cylinder which is completely stripped. And in looking at the pistons, I can easily see why those brakes weren't working properly. So if we look at this piston here, you can see all of the gunk that's in it. But if you look at this seal here, something is built up. I don't know what it is, but it's been pushing that seal flat. So hydraulic fluid was able to go from this area here. And instead of being pushed that way, it was end up probably passing this seal and going back. So I don't know what that is, but it's pretty easy to remove. We'll just get all these cleaned up nicely and they'll be ready to go back together. And in the meantime, this has got a date with the wire brush and then the powder coating oven, I think. If I have a seal for the back here, or I can get this off without damaging it, because if I put that seal in the oven, uh, it's gonna melt and I don't know if I've got one in my kit. And no, I do not. So if this will come off, it's going in the oven. If not, again, you just want to be careful because I don't want to start sticking these. These have got sharp ends, so I'm going to grab a blunt one. So this one doesn't have a sharp end. So we're less liable to gouge the seal and ruin it. And provided this will pop over. All right, that doesn't actually look too bad. It needs a bit of a clean up. It's got some surface rust um, that's just come off this onto it, but that'll be okay to reuse. And now this will be good to go in the oven. Okay, so looking down the bore of this one, um, it actually looks like it's in pretty reasonable nick. Uh, the, it's quite smooth in there. Um, so, and it doesn't look like there's a lot of rust. There was a lot of rusty water that came out of it, but it seems to have really only rusted right down the end, which shouldn't really cause us too many problems. So what I've done is just put a piece of cloth on a metal rod, I'm gonna spray some throttle body Clean it down there. Brake clean, if you will. Not really that much of a difference, but I don't have any brake clean at the moment. Just give it a clean out. And just making sure I don't scrape it at all, just carefully. And you can see there's not really that much coming out of there. It looks pretty good all the way to the bottom. Like I said, I don't know if it would be possible for you to see that, but it could. 
does look pretty good. Twenty minutes later. So let the gas come out a bit. Okay, so the master cylinder is cool now out of the powder coat oven. Uh, it came out pretty good. There's a couple of little bits where um, powder hasn't adhered, but I think that would have been just covered up by the uh, masking tape that was around the centers that I screwed in. I probably just wasn't careful enough. Uh, but other than that, it actually looks factory as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and the cool thing about this is I still have the original tech Toyota logo stamped into it, so everyone knows it's original part. Um, this is a 13 16th uh, master cylinder, just in case anyone was wondering. The TA22 models, I think, are a smaller one. Um, and if you're going for brake conversions, you obviously make this uh, a larger, I think it's a um, uh, 7 8 uh, master cylinder out of another car, probably a Hilux or something like that, with a four bolt pattern that will fit onto this. So. All I've really had to do is just pull the masking tape off here and give this a bit of a clean up. Um, it's still a little bit tacky, so once it's all assembled, I'll give it a wipe down just to get that tack off with some uh, wax and grease remover. But other than that, we have everything ready to go. So we have. So looking at the parts that we have, brake master cylinder. We have the seal kit, which had six seals in it. Um, three of which are identical. Two have these sort of cutouts that make them look like a little bit like pedals. Uh, in them and then this little guy here now I wouldn't worry too much about that little guy actually I don't know where that one goes so um, I'm hoping it's not supposed to be refreshed in this and it goes somewhere else I really just have no idea it might be for a proportioning valve or something who knows um, I certainly don't so I'm going to check the manual on that one and if I find out I'll let you know if I don't it will remain a mystery and will not be refreshed uh, other than that, everything else came out pretty good. Got all the reservoirs, their floats, uh, the seal for the back of the master cylinder, uh, the caps for the reservoirs, the two pistons, springs, the brake fluid sensors or level sensors, whatever you want to call them, and the, I don't know what they're, restrictor valves or something like that for the actual brake lines to run through. So all the parts cleaned up well, they all look pretty good. It's just a case of putting them back in. I've got the other essentials in terms of a little bit of brake fluid uh, just to lube up things as I put them together, mainly because I think it'll help them slide together and it's probably pretty safe to be lubing this stuff with brake fluid. Um, and some bourbon, and that's there to lubricate me. All right, let's get into it. <clears throat> Trying hard, but you wanna be my friend. Ain't no place to hide, ain't no one to run to. Here we go, here we go again. Call my bluff, I'ma be you till the end. I'm the one you ride, I'm the one you ride to. If you Okay, so there we have an assembled brake master cylinder. Now, uh, obviously all of the seals have been replaced, uh, except for that little guy that I still don't know where it went. Uh, if anyone knows, let me know. 
Um, the cylinder was in good condition. Uh, the pistons were in good condition. Uh, so we should have stopping power. The only things I'm a little disappointed in is really the reservoirs. I was really hoping that the reservoirs would have come up a lot better. Um, I have tried to find these before online as replacement items. I mean, they must be fairly generic and probably used on other Toyotas. So if anyone out there does know where I can get replacement reservoirs, please let me know. Um, but anyway, look, all in all, I think it looks about a nine out of 10, all things considered. And it is, as I said, the original part. So I'm happy with that. Okay, so obviously I'm not going to put this straight back on the car. Uh, it does need to be bench bled before it goes back on and we'll show you that in another episode. But uh, I also need to fix up that rust and a few bits and pieces. So um, it'll stay off for now, uh, but it is done. So I can check that one off. And for now, why don't we have a look at some cars from Turtles in the Park. Okay, yeah, so some really cool cars there and a really great community of people. Uh, I'm now a member at the um, Tequa Car Club, so I'm hoping to spend a bit more time out at their events in future. Okay, and another thing that I did want to say about the rebuild process itself, uh, look, if I hadn't been filming and powder coating and tidying all these pieces up 
and I just wanted to rebuild the master cylinder so that it was serviceable again. This process would have taken maybe an hour to a, an hour to two tops. So in terms of an investment of money, the seal kit was 35 bucks and time being one or two hours, it's really something that you should feel comfortable doing yourself at home. It is a braking system, however, so you do really wanna check, double check and then triple check uh, once you do have this going back on the car. But for now, that's where we're gonna end things. So that just leaves us with the standard things of like and subscribe if you like the episode. You can find me on Instagram uh, and thebuildroom.com. And in next week's episode, I promise you, we are going to get to those struts. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for watching The Build Room and bye for now. Oh,